Hello Model Railroaders! Today we're going to be working on an Atherin Genesis EMD F45 decorated in Wisconsin Southern. We're going to be performing an electronics upgrade on this item and repairing some body damage that the model has incurred. We'll also be adding an ESU Loksound V5 decoder. We'll be putting in a decoder buddy. This will help us add a bunch of lighting effects to the locomotive. It's a pretty neat tool. And then we'll be installing some speakers from Scale Sound Systems. These things will really give the locomotive great sound. We'll also be putting in a rotary beacon from Aaron Hein Electronics. This is a really cool lighting effect that we'll be adding. And then we'll be bringing in some ditch lights here as soon as I can find them. The ditch lights are also from Scale Sound Systems. Jumping right into the disassembly here, uh, we'll get the snow plow and other parts out of the way. But we're going to grab a screwdriver here. And the first thing that we're going to do is take off the fuel tank and the coupler boxes so we can remove the shell. So a simple twist to the screwdriver here and the fuel tank pops right off and a pro tip I like to use the fuel tanks on my locomotives as parts holders so I don't lose any parts and they all stay in one spot and don't get scattered about the workbench so we'll go ahead and take the couplers off here um, this is a pretty simple process I like to use a pliers there just to make sure the screw doesn't go flying and with a quick pull the coupler box comes right out now we'll repeat that on the other side and give it a quick twist here as you can see getting the shell off the locomotive isn't a very um, difficult process and we'll just grab that screw put it in the fuel tank slash parts tray and pull that coupler box out and put it in the tray. All right. And once we've got the screws off, just pops the shell right off the locomotive. Now, as you can see here, the guy that did the install before this, which was me, um, had wires everywhere and looked like uh, it was his first time because it was. So we're gonna go ahead and fix up the electronics and do some upgrades. Now that we've got the shell taken off, we're going to get rid of the decoder by taking a pliers and removing the plastic tabs that are holding the track power wires and motor wires on the decoder. So we'll go ahead and remove these six wires and tabs and then I'll just use the pliers to complete that activity. We'll pull the speaker out and aside and then we'll go ahead and pop the AT style decoder off of the frame. With the decoder and speaker cast aside we'll go ahead and continue our tune-up process by greasing the axles. So I'm taking a screwdriver here and prying up the cover that's on the bottom of the axles by just slamming it in there and giving it a quick twist. Don't be afraid to get a little rough with it. This clip can be kind of a bugger to get off. So once I have the cover off, I'll give the wheels a quick check, make sure that they're engaged with the NMRA standards gauge. Um, it's a key component to making sure that your locomotives stay on the track. If the wheels are out of gauge, uh, it is a surefire way to cause derailments on your railroad. So periodically, it's a good idea to just randomly check locomotives and rolling stock to make sure that your wheels are engaged. So now that we've done that inspection, we'll go ahead and get things set up here to do the lubrication of the axle gears. So I like to use label grease and I just take a tiny dab of it and place it on the axle. So we, I'm talking about 
a dab the size of maybe a pencil lead tip and just adding that because a little bit of this goes a long way once I have the grease on the axles in the gears right where I want it um, before I put the cover back on I'll go ahead and make sure that the grease gets in there by rotating the flywheel and rotating the gears So we have the motor out and the first thing we'll want to do to continue our tune-up is to pop out the brushes on the motor and this will allow us to get in there to clean the commutator as well as lubricate the brushes so that they do not squeak. The Atherin Genesis motors have a tendency to squeak after a while when the commutators get dirty so it's important to always come back and clean them out every once in a while um, that way you don't have squeaky motors interfering with your DCC sound effects from your fancy decoders and speaker sets so we pop away the brush from the housing and you have to make sure that you don't lose your brush now the brushes come on the end of a spring and one misstep and they'll go flying across the room and be lost forever so make sure you take good care of your brushes after you pop them out so we'll go ahead and take the screwdriver here and we'll just put it into the slot on the bottom of the motor and we'll repeat the process so we'll pry off the brush housing be careful to not let the brushes or the spring or the brush themselves go flying and we'll go ahead and set that aside. So now with the brushes out of the motor, um, we'll go ahead and bring in our cleaner lubricant here. It's CRC 2-26. That stuff is impossible to find. I had to go to Amazon to get it. And I wanna show you guys here how dirty that commutator is. So you can see down in there, there's a gold or a brass thing with a bunch of black gunk on it here by my screwdriver tip. And you can see that's the carbon scoring from the electric motor use. So we're gonna go ahead and clean that off using a Q-tip and our CRC-226. So I got one pre-wet here. And we'll just go ahead and rotate the flywheel. And it rotates the commutator and we'll just press the Q-tip up against the commutator. And we'll continue this process until we can see that the commutator is starting to get clean. You can see all the gunk coming off on the Q-tip there. These commutators can get pretty dirty after use. And I think this is possibly one of the best ways to maintain your locomotive motors. As we finish up cleaning the commutator for the motor, we'll go ahead and wipe down the brushes as well. And once we've got the brushes clean, we'll go and reassemble the motor. So it's, again, make sure that you're putting the brushes in the right way. The brushes have a little cup to seat around the commutator. If you don't uh, put them in the right way, it won't spin freely. As you can see, we managed to get her going here. And we'll go ahead and test the operation by taking a 9-volt battery and the motor power leads and hooking them up. And hooking them up. Here we go. We finally got her. And as you can see, it's spinning. Um, so this is a quick, easy way to test your motor. And it's whisper quiet. And you can see it shuts off there. So a successful test and a clean motor. The last part of our tune-up today, we'll go ahead and take some contact cleaner and clean up the wheels. So the wheels can get dirty just like the commutators and to get good electrical pickup, it's important to go ahead and keep these buggers clean. So through the magic of video, I've gone ahead and reinstalled the motor. Um, and as you can see there, there's the wires hanging out from the top. Just like how we clean the commutator, we're going to go ahead and clean the wheels. So using my trusty nine volt battery, I hook the motor leads up and as you can see, the wheels start to spin. And I just take my Q-tip uh, with the contact cleaner applied and hold it up to the wheels. Not using anything abrasive here to clean the wheels. 
Um, a Q-tip with contact cleaner seems to do the trick and as you can see that degunks them pretty fast. If you want to do this trick uh, quickly and effectively you could take a cloth or rag and spray the contact cleaner over a large area and put the whole front series of axles on that um, affected cloth area and you can go ahead and, and do all six at once. Um, but for video and demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and just use the old Q-tip method here and we'll go ahead and get these wheels all shined up. And you can see there's quite a bit of dirt and gunk. And now, through, again, through the magic of video, let's take a look and compare the cleaned wheels versus the dirty wheels. So I think it's time to speed up this process and bring in a funky beat. With the tune-up now complete, it's time to move on to the DCC decoder and speaker upgrade. So we're also going to be upgrading the lighting. And in front of us here, I have a Scale Sound Systems ditch light setup. They're for the pilot-mounted uh, ditch lights. They come with a 3D printed set of housings and some pre-wired surface mount LEDs. And as you can see, I'm just taking some Tamiya flat black paint and painting up the housings. And once we get these housings finished, um, we'll go ahead and move on to assembling the fixtures. But I just want to comment uh, quickly on the scale sound systems uh, offering here with their ditch lights. I was a bit skeptical getting lighting uh, from a person who or a company that focuses on sound. But I have to say that these uh, housings and lights um, which are already pre-wired um, are fantastic and they provide a very dramatic effect on the front of the locomotive as you will see at the end of the video. I think it's a safe time here to speed the process up. Ah, oh, great, now I gotta find this damn piece. It's on the floor, it's shot a mile away. Oh, I hit my head, God, this is the worst. I'm never gonna find it. Where's the flashlight? Give me the flashlight, give me the flashlight. All right, put it over here, hold it there. All right, I think I, nope, nope, that's a fur ball. Oh my God, this is, ah, uh, 
Oh, it was stuck in my sweater the whole time. Hmm. All right. Things are looking up. And now back to your program. Now that we've located our piece, we need to prep it uh, for accepting the lens and the LED for the ditch light. So we'll go ahead and we're going to glue the lens in first. And we want to make sure that it seats down properly on the housing. Um, that way it doesn't look like it's kind of cattywampus. And I want to prep the LED, the wired up LED here by twisting the wires together. So now this is a pro tip that I've picked up on. If you twist the wires together into a braid, it makes, a, it makes the wires more manageable and allows us to, to bend and shape it as we need it. We'll put a dab of super glue onto the LED and put the lens and housing on there. We want to be careful to get it aligned correctly the first time um, because the super glue does dry pretty quick. I think I got it. Um, yeah, looks pretty good. All right, so now we're going to drill out the holes for the wires on the ditch light. In the pilot there, I'm using, I think, a number 68 drill bit. And once the hole is made, we'll feed the wires through and pull it so that the ditch light is seated flush on the pilot. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and do the same on the other side. So we'll thread the wires through and voila! Come back in with a bit of super glue now. I use the Loctite thick brand. It gives me enough time to set things as I need it. So I'll just use a tiny dab here on a toothpick underneath the ditch light behind behind it. I'll just put a little bit on the hole as well. I'll add a little more for good measure. I apologize for the camera work here. I know it's kind of lousy, but um, I tried uh, my webcam to do the overhead shots here, and it will be the last time I do that. Okay, so now we got the ditch lights glued on. It's time to install the rotary beacon. So we got our Aaron Hine Electronics rotary beacon. Uh, it's a pretty cool item. It's actually a series of four LEDs packed together to simulate a rotary beacon. So I'll go ahead and feed it up through the hole in the cab and we'll get it situated. And then we'll take our Details West uh, rotary beacon housing casting and we'll feed that over the rotary beacon. That way, when we go to glue it all up, it'll all be copacetic and we won't have to fish things through really tiny and small holes. So once we get the casting threaded in, we'll get a dra drop of super glue here, just a tiny, tiny amount on the end of the toothpick, and we'll go ahead and glue the housing to the cab. So just a dab here where the touch points are on the housing. And there we go, we got a good amount on there now. And then we just go ahead and press that Details West casting on the top of the, the roof. Make sure that we get it into place so we can, it's aligned properly in the center of the cab and the feet of the housing are pointed in the right orientation. So now we'll go ahead and put our covering on our rotary beacon and we'll take the amber little casting that we get here and put a dab of super glue in there and put the LED, the top of the LED into the bottom of the casting. Now it's really important that 
you get the orientation right here that it's seated properly and flush against the the bottom of that amber casting otherwise it won't be aligned correctly the light won't be aligned and it'll look funny when you operate it so make sure you get it straight before the glue sets so with the glue on the casting for the rotary beacon set it's time to glue the whole thing together I'll just take again some super glue and push it down on top and voila As for the installation of the rear lights, I'm gonna speed that whole section up. It was a painful and tedious process, but in the end, we got it. The lights are oriented and aligned properly. Whew. So I tried to highlight the lights, but the crummy cam work really inhibited you seeing the end results there. Before we put the decoder buddy in, I just want to draw attention to the speakers that we've installed on this locomotive, both at the front and the rear. So these are the scale sound systems, um, speakers that are specifically drop-in speakers for an F45. Uh, for an Atherin F45. So these are custom made and they are specially designed to sit right in the frame casting for this Atherin model. So as we prepare to get the decoder buddy installed, I'm going to go ahead and tin up and attach the speaker leads to the scale sound systems speakers. Now this process is a, a delicate one because you don't want to damage the speaker housing themselves. So you want to make sure that you're pretty light on the, on the solder. Now the white thing that you see in the center here is a custom built job that I put together that allows wires to pass under the decoder buddy. So as you can see I got a couple of channels built in there and it's just made out of evergreen styrene. And before we attach our decoder buddy to the model or to the motor, we'll get these wires fed through. Now the decoder buddy is going to be adhered to the model just using double-sided carpet tape. And I've already pre-stuck one side and pulled off the adhesive backing. And we'll just walk it down on top of the styrene fixture that I've created. And just like downtown, the decoder buddy is in the locomotive. So the next step will be to solder up the track power leads to the decoder buddy. And we'll just quickly go through that process here. I pre-tin all of my wires. So basically put a little flux on there as well to help the solder flow. That way it doesn't gob up the decoder buddy. So you want to make sure that you get all your wires pre-tinned and then go ahead and flux them again so that when they come, come in contact with the decoder buddy, the solder flows quickly and your hot iron won't burn up any parts of the microchip. So we'll go ahead and quickly tin up the ends here. And now I'll go ahead and attach. And that's it. Not much time on with the soldering iron on the decoder buddy there. Uh, you don't want to leave it on there to warp it or melt any of the other pieces of the microchip. So we'll go ahead and again, real quick, I use the pliers to hold the wire, that way I don't burn my hands. As you, can, as you can't see me attach it here, but ultimately uh, quickly soldering these items on. We'll go ahead and do the other side now. Just real quick, and that's it. And I give before I, I 
I uh, go, move on to the next lead. I always give the, the wire a bit of a tug just to make sure that it's securely soldered to the pad. Um, here I'm, I have to move it a little bit because it's wanting to float into the other pad on the decoder body and you don't want to create a, an arc or a short circuit there. So you want to make sure that it's one wire per pad when you do these connections. So I'm taking my time here with this last one. And quick tug, there it is. Bang. Okay. So now we'll just do the motor leads. And if you have a keen eye, you'll notice that I accidentally wired up the motor leads backwards. Off camera, I came back and adjusted that. So now the the best part of the decoder buddy installation is um, putting all the lighting effects from the cab and the rest of the shell onto this little, I guess, attaching microchip that um, pops off the decoder buddy itself and plugs back in. So that way you can separate the shell and all of the wiring from the chassis. Now with all the wires and leads soldered up to the decoder board, I wanted to demonstrate why this product is so awesome. So as you can see here, I have detached the decoder and the lighting effects pad from the motherboard. And it allows me to work on the locomotive if I need to, um, and switch out a decoder if I burn it out or something like that. So you can see how easy it pops and slides right back in. And we'll just switch it around here and we'll install the lighting effects tab here. Now it takes me a little bit to wiggle it on because I have kind of poor dexterity in my fingers. And oh, almost got it there. So once I do get it on and still don't have it. All right, there we go. So now we got it on, pushed all the way down to the pad. Let's get the shell back on and take it over to the test track for a spin. Okay, we're here with Wisconsin Southern 1002. The tune-up and DCC install are complete, featuring a decoder buddy, scale sound speakers, scale sound ditch lights, and an ESU Loke Sound version 5 decoder. So we're gonna give it a test run here, live on camera. So we'll go ahead and fire it up, hitting function eight. You can hear it starting to hum. Let's get the lights on. Cab light, beacon, and the ditch lights. I'll go ahead and test those ditch lights out. And we'll go ahead and do function 9 here for the drive hold. And we'll throttle it up and see what happens. We go through the different notches. All the way up to notch eight. Throw the bell in there for fun. It's enough of that noise. Honk again. And we'll bring it all the way down. Alright, since we're going forward here, the lights are on. Go ahead and give us a toot. Take drive hold off. And 
Away we go. If you want to continue to see more how-to model railroad videos from me, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my video updates. Or better yet, if you want to keep the fun going, click on one of the videos up in the upper left-hand corner to see more how-to videos from me.